What's mobbing with it, man? God bless y'all in Jesus' name, man. Y'all know what time it is. We're going to get it in for surely. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 3. Not domineering over those in your charge, but being examples to the flock. Hallelujah. This one right here is for leadership. We're going to touch on what it means to be a leader, what it means to be a shepherd, shepherd in the flock, and what that consists of. Um, first off, anybody who is in leadership and anybody who is a shepherd or shepherding a flock, we need to understand that that is a position that has been gifted to us by the Father, and we need to treat it as such. And when we understand what a shepherd's job is, a shepherd's job is to build the flock up, not tear it down. And I speak on that in the essence of understanding what it truly means to do so, um, to educate, to love, to assist in navigating the narrow path if needed, uh, godly wisdom, sound judgment, you know what I'm saying, um, grooming, all of these things that would consist of being a shepherd. And to understand what domineering is. And lording over somebody. At the end of the day, as a shepherd, we are there to bring correction. We are there to lead by example. And, and, and what that means is, is understanding that we do not have dominion over someone's conscience as a leader. At the end of the day, whatever choices they have, whatever free will, free will choices they have, we are there to educate them and do the best that we can to navigate them in the manner as we show them by example how we are submitted and surrendered onto the father we will do as such to the flock and we are there to you know what i'm saying be there in assistance but at the end of the day if we truly understand that a lot of leadership and a lot of individuals who've been placed in shepherds positions haven't been necessarily ordained by the father and placed in that position they've been placed in that position due to their credentials or just, you know, due to them feeling like that they deserve to be in that position, you know what I'm saying, excuse me. And at the end of the day, it is very detrimental to the flock when a so-called shepherd or leader has placed himself in that position and hasn't been properly equipped or you even took the preparation and understanding what it is called to be a leader or a shepherd. Um and I say that because at the end of the day, we are to live a life as a leader, not only um, to be above reproach, but to also live an example to the flock. See, at the end of the day, you'll have a lot of these so-called leaders, you know what I'm saying, or, you know, shepherds or whatever you may want to call them, whatever title you want to give them. At the end of the day, a lot of them may confess and proclaim with their speech that they are a believer. But are their lifestyles aligned with scripture? And we have to be under and we have to understand at the end of the day, as a leader, we will be held accountable in the manner that we were supposed to take care of the flock that has been gifted to us to oversee. And we need to be understanding of that. And nothing is our flock. That's where we need to get that out of our mind when people begin to claim a flock. This is my flock. No, that is the Lord's flock. You're overseeing it at this moment, but that's at, that's the Lord's. And we need to make sure that in the manner that you're professing and claiming to be a believer, that you're living a lifestyle as such, because if not, then you become a hypocrite. Then you become an individual who is leading in a manner that is asking of something of the flock that you aren't doing yourself. And the best way to lead by example is to really get out there in the mud and to walk amongst the flock, to be side by side and being able to live life with the flock. And a true shepherd and a true leader is going to teach the flock to study the word and read the word for itself so that they're not led astray for themselves. Because at the end of the day, and this is a message to the flock, we've been called as God's children to study the word of God to show ourselves approved, but as well as to make sure that we are not being led astray. Because once again, you'll have these other leaders, uh, 
so-called pastors or whoever you want to call them in leadership roles that at the end of the day haven't necessarily studied the word of God and sometimes may just be giving you their opinion or how they feel and it may not be coming from scripture or they may be twisting scripture out of context for the sake of their selfish gain or financial gain or whatever it may be and this is just me throwing things out there as far as scenarios but that's why we've been called to make sure that we study the word as the flock see as the flock our job is to make sure that we are also studying our word to show ourselves approved but so that we are not led astray see at the end of the day a leader a mentor a pastor whoever your spiritual covering may be when it comes to who's mentoring you, you know what I'm saying, your elder, at the end of the day, their job is to assist you when it comes to in questions you may have and helping you navigate through the narrow path as, you know, being that leader, shepherd, or mentor in your life. Their job isn't to do it for you. Their job isn't to break down every single scripture for you and to implement it into your lifestyle and all of them things. No, that's what you have to do. So this is a message for the leadership as well as to the flock. But this specific scripture is speaking to leadership and this passage and making sure that we understand that we are to not be domineering. We are to not take authority and try to lord over individuals and and their lives in a manner to where we're constantly getting at them in a manner that is out of pocket because we're not living that way ourselves, you know, and we need to be very mindful of that, man. If you're not living the way that you're calling the flock to live, to live and you're living as a hypocrite and your life isn't aligned with scripture, then man, you need to repent. You need to, you know, you need to sit it down, man. You know what I'm saying? And really get it right. And not to say that the Lord won't call you back to that leadership position if that's truly where you have been called to be. You know what I'm saying? Once again, are you have you been called or have you placed yourself there? You need to ask yourself that question as well. And me being transparent, there's been times to where I would say early on in my walk, there were certain positions I was in that I could say that I wasn't taking seriously. And I can be, you know, humble and admit that I wasn't taking them as serious as I should and I'll be held accountable for my actions early on in my walk you know prayerfully the mercy and grace that the father may show me out of my ignorance in areas where I was you know not leading in the manner that I should have been you know what I'm saying but I I'm here now and humbly doing the best of my abilities to lead you know and, and my life aligning up with scripture and what God has called me to be as far as being a leader but once again, man, I just want y'all to understand that for the sake of us as being leaders, when it comes to even the correction that we bring in areas of the flock that needs improvement, to rebuke or to reprove an individual was always for the sake out of correction, making sure that they're not in error, and as well as to make sure that it promotes and cultivates growth and stimulates and not stagnates. So we need to understand we need to be stimulating the flock when it comes to the correction or, you know, when it comes to a rebuke or whatever it may be for the manner of growth and encouragement for one to truly, you know, walk accordingly to the scriptures, not to stagnate one, not to continue to try to thump them with the Bible or use the word to tear someone down. That's not our jobs. Our job is to build up. So let's make sure as leaders, man, that we are truly taking this things serious that it's very vital and just severity and we are going to be held accountable us leaders for in the manner that we care for the flock and as well as the message to the flock read your word study your word make sure that you are doing all that you can do for yourself and following christ and you're not sitting here allowing your leader your pastor or whoever else in your life to become your idol because now you are looking to them more than you're looking to christ that is Something that I see a lot of individuals do at times because they've been spoon fed so much that they begin to just look at their pastor or look at their leader or they're always looking to them instead of looking to Christ. Instead of getting in their word themselves, consecrating themselves in prayer, fasting, really studying uh, God's word, they're always looking to their pastor. They're always, you know, going to somebody else and beginning to turn them into idols. 
And that's not the the leader's job. That's not the that I mean that's not the leader or the pastor's fault. That's the flock. We need to make sure that we examine ourselves and we're not looking to man more than we are Christ. And that we're not looking to our pastor or our leader and creating them and placing them in an idol and idolizing them. We need to make sure that we're looking for at them for the sake of their purpose. And understand that at the end of the day, our sole purpose is to serve Christ, to glorify Christ, to preach the gospel. And the only way that you can begin to do that is if you truly are learning the scriptures. If you're spending time in the scriptures, you're praying, you're truly studying God's word. You're asking the Holy Spirit to navigate you through the scriptures and truly understanding what it means by scripture, interpreting scripture so that you don't begin to take these things out of context. And as well, so that you're not led astray by individuals who are just speaking in whatever manner they please and twisting scripture, taking it out of context, whatever it may be, man. This is a message to leadership in the in the manner of that this scripture and this passage and this verse and what it was meant for. But I also wanted to make sure that as much as I am breaking down what it means to these leaders and not to be domineering over the flock and living a lifestyle onto the father that is submitting and surrendering and showing the flock how to truly submit and surrender to Christ. But as well as the flock understanding that they also have a duty and a job as well. And to not let us just always cast everything and our responsibilities onto the pastor or onto the leader or, you know, onto the shepherd for the sake of being, you know, lackadaisical when it comes to who we are in Christ. Let us not be that way. Hallelujah, man. I, I love y'all, man. Y'all be blessed today, man. Make sure that y'all continue to follow Christ, man. Do not lean on your un understandings. Lean on the godly wisdom of the Father. Hallelujah, man. Y'all be blessed.